Hello guys, this week OpenAI released this model GPT 5.2 and I decided to try it out because it's available in cursor, here's the tweet, and I tried it out with one prompt against Opus 4.5. OpenAI claim it to be the most professional, the most everything as usual, the newest model, including writing code, so let's see. I will run one prompt for Laravel project, comment how the model was actually thinking, and then at the end of this video, I will compare the pricing. GPT models are generally cheaper than Opus 4.5, but by how much for a specific prompt? We'll take a look. So in my cursor agent, I've chosen the model GPT 5.2, and this was my prompt. Add the field to add images to create an edit form, and this basically looks like this. So task creating form, and this was supposed to be the new field added. And as you can see, it was done successfully in roughly eight minutes, but let's take a look at the process. So how was the model thinking? And were there any problems along the way? So first, it checked the package installation, 25 seconds. So as usual, research, to-do list of seven items, then some more reading and grabbing the files. And then after like two minutes or so, the action actually started with getting Spotty Media Library. And under the hood, it uses so-called Context7 Library to get the docs of well-known packages. So this is not Laravel Boost, which comes from first-party Laravel. For outside libraries, Context7 is used. And then according to the docs of the package, the model tried to install specific version for some reason and it failed and then good catch and it changed the syntax although i would just use composer require which would install latest version automatically and then a few more artisan commands generated the migration at this point you see proceed because at this point it stopped and i'm not sure whether it was my internet connection or the model or i accidentally hit something like escape but it was frozen for a minute and when I type proceed, it well proceeded. So updated more files, figured out what manipulations need to be made for thumbnails, for example, 160 by 160 and, and then validation, all good, controller, the form, everything seems to be fine. Then automated test, configuration for AWS, which I will process later and test later outside of this video if it even works. But it should work because it's Laravel configuration and it's pretty configurable. And then one failed test. So apparently Spotty image manipulations isn't available. So it's a different syntax. So change the syntax to enums fit instead of manipulations. And then tests pass, then bind for code styling and done. So yeah, what we can conclude from this run Eight minutes, it's pretty slow model, to be honest, because it's positioned, if I understand correctly, as reasoning model. And then along the way, there were a few hiccups with different syntax or different versions, but it successfully corrected itself and proceeded well. And there was also one time I had to write it to proceed. Not sure why, maybe it was accidental. And now let's try to undo all the changes and make the same prompt to Opus 4.5. So yeah, cleaned up the git changes and we choose Opus 4.5 with the same prompt. Let's go. And this is the result in roughly same eight minutes. It's not slower or faster than GPT-5.2. Opus is also a reasoning model. And if I refresh that page, does it work? Yes, it does work with a little placeholder on top for better user experience. And let's read the process of what was done by Opus. And then I will compare the prices of the two. So it thought for three seconds, ran a few Laravel boost tools to explore the code base of Laravel. And then similarly, Context7 gave the information about the library and then nine to-dos instead of seven. So it separated them a little bit differently and Composer Require, without specifying the version, this is how I would have done it myself. And then a few more artisan commands for migrations of the database, similar thing with has media, it implemented has media and for thumbnails, let's see, this was the code. So two thumbnails instead of one by GPT-5.2 and also without any external dependency to fit something. 
validation is similar with a bit more granular validation rules in the controller it's the same i think then blade files for the forms preview in the table then running bind for code styling and then automate a test which did it succeed from the first time yeah it did succeed with only four test cases but opus executed that only with filters so executed only those new tests gpt model executed the whole test suite which is also probably a good thing so a few runs by opus of different filters and then yeah the whole test with 36 tests all pass with bind everything green as well and then the summary and this is actually the thing i noticed about opus specifically i was comparing that to sonnet and other models opus usually does things correctly from the first time so if the code is generated it may be a bit slower but the tests run from the first time bind for code styling also usually no errors so it's more stable especially for long running tasks especially compared to sonnet model sonnet tends to sometimes run in circles so the tests usually fail from the first attempt it's trying to be fast but then it fails and then it depends on the failure how many more loops it gets into so yeah opus again showed the stability compared to even gpt 52 as you saw with gpt model there were a few hiccups where it needed to fix itself didn't happen with opus and now let's take a look at the price so is it worth to use opus and this is my cursor dashboard so these two prompts were for gpt 52 before and after i hit proceed so in total that query was 85 cents opus was three times more expensive more stable yes a little bit better code here and there yes but it's probably your personal choice whether it's worth paying for opus that much so from this quick test what can i say about gpt 52 it did deliver it did fix itself where it was needed and personally i don't see much difference between gpt 52 and 51 probably i would need to run many more tests to feel the difference and also currently gpt 52 is not codex or codex max or whatever will be the next name so for codex i made some experiments earlier and the model name is codex max 52 will it be just general so they will not release codex or codex max we'll see for now i can approve that this model does work inside cursor in this case and you may try it out for yourself what do you think will you use gpt 5.2 for your prompts or will you stick with main model that you currently use and which one then let's discuss in the comments below and if you want to see more of my ai coding experiments subscribe to my weekly newsletter i send every wednesday so this was the last issue when i did review 5.1 codex max so it's happening that fast it's changing with rapid speed so to be on top subscribe to this free newsletter the link will be in the description below that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos